name is Melissa Finelli. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I make large-scale sculptural jewelry. This year, my patrons will expect my classic collection of sculptural jewelry, things that are definitely organic, but have a taste from another world. Like maybe if you were on an archeology span dig on another planet, you might find something of mine. But I also have a new collection that I have been working on, which is heavy forged metal. And honestly, it was brought on by the stresses of COVID and my joys of hammering. So it was kind of my way of combating my stress. So I take very thick pieces of pure silver. So there's no alloy in it. Without that alloy, it is so dense that it has this weight to it that makes you kind of want to sit up tall and take command. And without having that alloy, it is also super soft. So I can have my way with it. I can hammer it to the thinnest piece that is so textured and just so divine, and I can push it in ways that sterling silver doesn't allow. My process is very spontaneous. It's, it's kind of like a dance. I just have to move. And as long as I'm in motion, things start to happen. So I might spend a few days just making parts that I won't really know where it will lead. And then I'll have all these elements to kind of think about and play with. If I'm really in a stuck spot, I will make little jump rings. And eventually I have a series on my website of loopy link necklaces. Those are like my version of sketches. That's me thinking. So I just move until something clicks. When I'm creating my pieces, I know that this element of repetition is something that is very meditative to me. So some days I might spend most of the day at the torch, which is a place where I have to think more than others, maybe because there's like flame involved. And just focusing on these little shapes and seeing them change color. And sometimes they change form because I overheat them. Something magical will happen that they kind of speak to each other. And so then after they're soldered, I, you know, pick, I put them in this acid bath to clean them. And then I group them all together and see how they talk to each other. And as soon as they have this conversation, it's like, I, I know just what to do without having a plan and without really knowing where I was going, but I let the little elements dictate all of that. The inspiration for my designs really comes from my whole surroundings. I'm a very urban person. I live right in the city center. I see shiny architecture, I see old dilapidation, I hear tons of noise. And I feel like that all just mixes up in my head and becomes this visual sensation.